What's up guys, Will here with Renthusiast, my YouTube channel that is all about Porsche ownership. And in today's video, I take you through an interview I did with the owner of a 1974 Porsche 911 Coupe in Salmon. Very, very cool color. I had never seen it before. He picked it up and so uh, I'll, I'll be curious to hear what you guys think about the color. In terms of how this story lays out, I'll say this. The owner of this car is a new owner. He only picked the car up a couple months ago. The way in which he bought this car is one of the craziest ways that I've heard anybody pick up one of these cars. And frankly, it gives me hope that there's still deals to be had out there. So that's the good. He has a very cool story about how he got the car. Uh, the car is very, very clean. However, there is a big downside in this story too. He's facing a very unfortunate turn of events that recently occurred on a spirited drive in the car. Uh, so, you know, we'll touch on that in the story and I would love to hear you guys uh, weigh in in the comments about how you would handle uh, what he's facing. I'd like to share with you too a very exciting update to this channel. I have recently put together a deal with a company called Creator Stash to begin offering uh, a central location, a central hub for what I'm calling Porsche Essentials. The link to that storefront is down below in the description. And uh, what I've done is I've linked and listed certain products that I've found to be very essential, not only for my Porsches, but also just for my general garage experience. So I urge you to check that out. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to this channel. Let us now jump into the interview. Okay guys, here we are in front of one of, I would say, is the most intriguing mid-year 911s that I've come across. It belongs to my friend Brad. This car is actually immobilized as we speak, and we'll get into that in a moment. But this, as I said in the intro, like the way that he got this car is frankly one of the most insane Porsche acquisition stories I've ever heard. And frankly, I was a part of it, which makes it close to my heart. This is my friend Brad. He's gonna tell us about his 74 Salmon 911. Sure. So the acquisition story certainly is an interesting story. And uh, as you mentioned, Will, it, it began with the lead through the Renthusiast site. Um, the spouse of the deceased owner of this car had reached out to you and uh, complimented your work in the Porsche community and asked if you'd have interest in either buying this car or perhaps uh, pointing her in the direction of someone who might be interested in buying it. And uh, from there we started the conversation and initially I have to say I think both of us thought that this could be a scam. Yeah, the, the verbiage in the email was really interesting, a little bit questionable, just how it all laid out and it was like, man, this really feels too good to be true, right? Yeah, there was, there was kind of limited detail included initially and um, so my first thought was, you know, let's, let's set up a conversation and uh, she was willing to do that. So we had an initial phone conversation. I'd say that probably lasted 45 minutes or an hour. And to be frank, very little of it was about the car. You know, most of the conversation was about her husband, the original owner of the car, um, their life together, and uh, the work that he did in film. Um, so, you know, I didn't learn a tremendous amount about the car in the first call, but I did learn a lot about the owner and um, you know some history related to the car so we kind of uh, agreed that we would reconnect we exchanged a few emails in between you know I was really interested in getting getting pictures of the car and that was a bit of a challenge the uh, owner didn't have an iPhone and it was definitely tucked away into a garage beside a, an older Mercedes and uh, I thought that her description of it being you know, a few inches from the wall might have been an exaggeration, but it, it truly was so tightly placed in the garage that you couldn't get a shot of the car, a clear shot of, of any complete angle of the car. So I got all these random photos and I shared some with you. I'd get, you know, photos of a fender, photos of a, uh, a door handle or uh, a portion of the headliner. And in retrospect, I can only imagine how difficult it was for her to manipulate herself and, and her iPad mini to capture those pictures. And, and meanwhile, I mean, you were sending me these pictures and the whole time I was, I was really shaking my head of like, man, this just feels scammy. It was just like random spots on the car. I mean, yeah, you could tell it was a salmon 911, but it just didn't, it just felt weird. It was weird. Yeah, it, it, it did. It was a little concerning, but you know, we, we continued our conversations about the car and I will say it got a little more interesting as we went because I was interested in having the car PPI'd somewhere. 
and uh, you know having a shop either come out and take a look at it or arranging transport to take it to the shop and and she was reluctant to allow me to do that and rightly so I mean this was a, a family heirloom of sorts uh, for her and um, you know she was representing this car alone and uh, obviously wasn't enthusiastic about having someone come to her home and, and pick the car over or to, to put it on a truck and send it to a shop. So I didn't have the option of, of having an inspection done on it and uh, was simply relying on the, the photos and the conversation. So, you know, even at, even at that point, I, I, I had some reservation and uh, felt like I had to see the car. So I made a trip to Michigan from North Carolina to take a look at the car in person and it was when I arrived that I had a, a new appreciation for her situation and, and I understood why I only had a picture of the left corner of the rear bumper or you know a portion of the steering wheel it was because she couldn't move this car it was wedged in her garage and she literally had inches of clearance to try to take these photos for me so really it was eye-opening to get there and uh, seeing the car for the first time in person, you know, really solidified it for me. Um, of course, there were a couple unknowns, some things that uh, I wasn't anticipating, but not too bad. Like this, uh, this patina. Yeah, so the patina, what was uh, unique, and this is a part of the story as well, is this car would uh, experience, you know, everyday use and get these nicks and dings on it. She actually would come out with an X-Acto pin and she would scrape away any loose paint or any thread of rust and she'd fill these with red oxide primer. So when I got the car, and I'll, I'll try to find a picture of it, all of the spots that you see that are showing the gray primer were actually covered in uh, red oxide primer when it arrived and I just found that it, it looked much more authentic to uh, remove that primer and just, just show the car for what it is. I agree. I mean, I think these cars, the G bodies wear patina so well, and I love how the patina is part of the story. I mean, I I love it. I just think that's a cool look, you know. Now, you do have some rust concerns with this car. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah, sure. So, you know, one of the areas I wasn't expecting to find some rust, there's a little bit in the um, the door jams just at the bottom. I think it's where water probably settled um, and caused the corrosion to occur. I had a body shop take a look at it. Uh, they aren't concerned about being able to repair it. They don't think it's very significant, uh, although it will require some, some cutting and patching. Um, you know, one of the struggles I have with this car is the fact that most of the paint on the car is original. Um, it did have a bump up in a parking lot uh, years ago that resulted in the uh, left quarter being repainted and, and not to a very high standard but at the time it was done this car didn't have a very high value either so there's some some i'd say fair at best paint work on the the rear quarter um, i did also discover there's been some paint work on the front right fender and uh, after i purchased the car i had the rocker covers and rear valance sprayed um, just because the owner had already removed them and he had primed them as a precautionary step and uh, I thought the car would just look more complete. And I have to admit after putting them on I'm, I'm reluctant to paint any part of the car. I mean this original paint it just wears so well even with its flaws. So talk to me about this paint, the paint color, the rarity. Yeah so Porsche actually started base coat clear coat um, with the 74s, I think that was the first year it was offered. So there's a, a little tag, I don't know if you can capture it on film, but there's a little tag there, right there, that describes the two-step paint process. So it is a base coat clear coat, despite it being a 74 model. I never really seen a salmon metallic 911. But as I researched it, it, it's actually a pretty rare color. It was a rainbow five bucket color. And I think it was only offered on a couple model years. And then it's kind of accented by, I think an unusual interior as well. It, it, it looks black, it photographs as black, but it's actually a very deep blue on the seats and um, the door cards. They're a very deep blue. And then the dash and the tops of the doors, they're, uh, they're obviously black along with the carpet. Now, 
you got some cool like original kit with it right like tools yeah i got a lot i've got the original tool kit um, the tool kit still has any of the paper tags that would have been attached with um, you know a piece of string those tags are still attached and intact um, the pouch itself looks brand new for the car uh, i was fortunate to get the uh, original key fob um, three original keys and um, you know window sticker and, and other documentation from new and then there's some some really neat pieces where either she or her husband had taken handwritten notes or typed notes regarding the car its maintenance um, unique things about the car um, it was something they were clearly attached to so he purchased this from the original owner with tons of original stuff very rare color he's got a killer story of how he got it um, and I witnessed this thing as he mentioned play out and I mean he put six weeks of conversations and waiting on odd pictures to show up I mean the man paid for this car in patience so that's the good but now I want to get into the not so good unfortunately <laughs> so as I touched on at the beginning of this video uh, this car does not currently run well it does run yeah, it'll run. <laughs> it'll run, but I don't think you want to be driving it. So why don't you talk to us about what we're doing uh, about that problem and where this car might be going today, actually. Yeah, so so when I got the car, I immediately had it sent over to our, our buddy uh, Eric at Sports Purpose Garage. And he was kind enough to assess it and to, uh, you know, make the necessary uh, improvements to, to put it back on the road. So we made some suspension changes obviously you know all the fluids were done uh, brake fluid flush brake lines a lot of typical maintenance work and i tell you the car ran like an absolute top um, more fun than i've ever had in a 911 and my prior 911 was a 3.2 and, and i swear i think this car is quicker and more nimble than that 3.2 was but regrettably on a on a drive one afternoon uh, just before christmas uh, without any indication or, or, or you know, prior symptoms, I heard a, a, a terrible rattle from the back. And I assumed that I had dropped the muffler. It sounded like the muffler came off the car and was dragging on the ground. But when I pulled over and, and checked it out, everything was intact. Um, I didn't see anything that was loose or hanging off. So I tried to restart, and when I tried to restart, it was pretty clear something was going on. It didn't want to turn over at all, um, almost a scenario where it, it felt like it was in a bind of some sort. Uh, so I waited for three hours on the side of the road. I think we had a, a conversation during that wait as well. We did. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he was not happy. No, I wasn't happy that day, and, and the, the tow truck finally arrived. Um, I kept it here at the house and just, just you know, looked it over again, hoping I might see something obvious. I didn't. So we sent it to a, another shop in Greensboro um, and had them take a look at the car. And, and what was determined there was that I had lost compression on the right side. So the three right cylinders, I think they had about 40 pounds of compression. So. From that assessment, it, it's pretty clear that uh, the tensioner failed on the right side and led to uh, the car jumping time. So I, I'd say at minimum, there's valve damage and there's the potential that there's piston damage and other damage as well. But uh, I, I really struggled with what I wanted to do next. I obviously had a fair amount in the car just to get it to this point. And, uh, wasn't terribly excited about the rebuild on a 2.7 magnesium case uh, engine but you know as I spent more time with the car I really I just I love this little car I, I think it's so unique I don't think that I could find something that's more desirable to me and I know what's been done to it I know the history of the car since new so it really became a pretty easy decision in the end to just proceed with the rebuild. So, you know, in, a, in a, probably an hour or so, it's going to be picked up by uh, the folks at Black Forest Racing. And they have all the uh, resources and tools to rebuild the motor. You know, with the magnesium case, you've got to put in the time search or the case savers. They have the uh, tooling there to do that. And uh, I spoke with the owner, Cody, and the service manager there, Jonathan, and just 
I feel really confident in their abilities and I'm, I'm happy to be sending the car there. You know, I watched you struggle with this decision and I'm, I'm actually very, very happy that you've landed where you have with it. I mean, <clears throat> for those of you watching this video, I was like, I was, I was wanting to buy this car from him. I mean, I would have tackled the rebuild for all the reasons he's talked about. I mean, original owner, killer color, very unique car, clean otherwise. I mean, I just, I think it's worth it. I think the car deserves it and I think it's a keeper. So for what it's worth, I think, Brad, you're, you're making the right decision here. And so, um, you know, we'll be doing some more videos on this car as the rebuild process unfolds. But I just wanted to share this car with you guys. I mean, it's, it is so cool. And, you know, I was tickled to be able to get, get Brad the lead on the car through the channel. It's good to know that, uh, that this work is helping people out. So, Brad, man, I want to thank you for your time and sharing the story on this car. And, and doubtless, by the way, I'm sure the viewers have noticed the rest of your collection back here. Maybe we'll get that on video someday. But, Brad, I appreciate your time, man. Thank you, Will.